Hi, welcome to another Varsity video. My name is Karthik Rangappa and in this video, I'll talk to you about how to avoid making silly mistakes in a bear market. The most recent bear market that we witnessed was the COVID-led market crash in early 2020. The strange thing about this particular crash was the speed at which the markets cracked and the speed at which the markets recovered from this crack, like as if nothing changed fundamentally. This strange bear market behavior, especially the quick recovery part, introduced many new and young investors to the market. Unfortunately, most of the new market participants now believe that all bear markets subsequently end up in a V-shaped recovery. But this is certainly not true. Let me share some bear market stats with you. Asian financial crisis, starting from August 1997, market cracked a whopping 38%. Time taken to recover from the crash, 500 days. Dotcom burst, 2000, markets cracked 52%. Time to recovery, 975 days. Subprime crisis, 2008. Markets cracked 60%. Time to recovery, 700 days. Carry trade unwinding in 2010. Markets cracked 30%. Recovered over 800 days. 2015, markets cracked 25%. And it took nearly 600 days to recover 25%. Now contrast these bear markets with the most recent COVID crash that we had. Markets cracked 38%, but the time taken to recover from this crash, just 200 days. Of course, I've not considered many smaller drawdowns in the market, which also takes time to recover and seldom pose a V-shaped recovery. So given that a typical bear market is unlike what we witnessed in 2020, what is it that we should expect from a bear market? And most importantly, how do we position ourselves to ensure that we navigate through this bear market as safely as possible? To begin with, we need to understand a few common patterns that occur in a typical bear market. In a bear market, the overall sentiment is weak. This is quite obvious. Even the most obvious positive news will be ignored and perhaps looked at negatively. Every day, rumors float, hinting at how the world is going to end. Volatility is on the higher side. Every relief rally within a bear market gets sold. Markets in general and many stocks hit lower lows. So given these common patterns in a bear market, the question is how do you position yourself? Well, unfortunately, there is no single answer that will suffice to all market participants. Though the common goal for all market participants is to make money and create wealth, we all employ different techniques to achieve the same common goal. So the way in which you position yourself in a bear market really depends on the kind of persona you don in the market. So let me discuss a few personas and the way in which you can position yourself in a bear market, given that persona. I'll start with the two simplest personas in the market. Let's deal with a mutual fund investor running only SIPs and doing nothing else in the market. For some weird reason, people running mutual fund SIPs panic the most during a bear market. And I just don't seem to understand why. Remember, if you are running a SIP, that is because you want to benefit from all market cycles, be it a bull market or a bear market. And you don't really want to crack your head on running a stock portfolio or timing the market. Eventually, markets do recover from a bear market, although it takes time. So if you are a mutual fund investor just running a SIP book, then I would suggest you don't worry about anything and continue running your SIPs. In fact, if you have lump sum funds available with you during a bear market, it may not be a bad idea to make a lump sum purchase. Overthinking, panicking and completely stopping your SIPs during a bear market is one of the stupidest things to do for a mutual fund investor during a bear market. So please don't worry, continue your SIPs and eventually they will recover from the drawdown.
Let's look at the second persona, the persona of a long-term equity investor. Bear market is when the market really tests your conviction on the stock that you've bought. The stronger your conviction, the stronger is your resolve to stay invested. But you will develop the conviction to hold on to the stock only if you have a solid thesis backing your decision to buy the stock in the very first place. If you bought the stock on a weak premise and a loosely based analysis, then obviously you will not have the conviction to hold on to the stock. And chances are that you will sell the stock during a bear market. Of course, this is easier said than done. I have seen veteran investors with solid research selling their stocks during bear market. The bear market plays mind games and you need to be super clear about your intention as to why you bought the stock in the first place. You hold on to the stock as long as the business fundamentals haven't changed. The bear market also offers you great opportunities to spot great businesses at attractive valuations. So do watch out for these opportunities. But of course, if you want to go ahead and exploit these opportunities, you need to ensure that you have funds available with you and the courage to deploy these funds in a bear market. And lastly, you need to have a set of stocks in your watch list that you think are great businesses and are just waiting for the right opportunity to buy. So those two were investor-based personas. Let's move ahead to the traders now. To begin with, let's deal with an equity positional trader. I'm talking about a trader who does only positional equity long trades here, also called the equity swing trader. If you are one of such traders, perhaps it's a good time to take a long break from the market and go on a holiday. The thing with bear markets is every dip feels like the markets have bottomed out and you would be tempted to bottom fish the market. Maybe after you buy, the markets may rally one or two percent giving you the confidence that the markets have indeed bottomed out. But remember, most likely these are bull traps within a bear market and they can be really, really brutal. The problem is, if you bought into this bull trap and your position is making money, then you may be tempted to perhaps add more to this position. But one day, the markets can quickly reverse direction and continue its downward rally. And this will not give you the opportunity to exit out of your long trades. You would be left with a bleeding position. You are better off not doing such trades in a bear market. Now let's look at a positional FNO trader. Now if you belong to this category with active FNO trading, then perhaps there are a few opportunities here for you. Positional short trades, either via short futures or long puts, may work in your favor. Positional short calls may also work in your favor, considering the fact that the volatility would be on the higher side and the premiums would have swelled. But avoid buying out-of-the-money put options or out-of-the-money call options just because you've seen a pullback. One common mistake that I've noticed with traders is them shorting out of the money put options, thinking that the markets won't fall any further. But this is a brutal mistake. Panic spreads fast and the fall in market can overwhelm you. So please do avoid shorting put options in a bear market. Lastly, let's discuss about the day traders. Well, you guys have no overnight risk. Therefore, you can continue doing what you are doing, assuming you know how to day trade. But at no cost, don't let your day trade convert itself to an overnight trade or a long-term investment. I did mention that there are opportunities for intraday traders slash day traders and positional FNO traders. But you can exploit these opportunities only if you know all the nuances involved with the financial instruments you're dealing with and the risks involved. You will end up losing money if you don't fully understand what you're dealing with. So do spend time educating yourself. I did discuss a few personas in the market, but in reality, there could be many more. For example, you could be a futures long only trader. 
or you could be a long call options trader or you could be an options trader dealing with only option spreads the idea here is to identify your agenda in the market and take actions that are aligned with your market agenda and avoid taking irrational steps during a bear market perhaps even in a bull market i hope you found this video useful i'll see you in the next video